everyone. This is Sister Jenna from the American Meditating Radio, and I hope you have started to meditate the vote. It's an initiative that we have designed to raise the awareness of who we are and why we're here. This political campaign has us thinking, and it has us really diving deeper as to to what extent are we in charge of our own lives. Regardless of who goes into office in 2017, we're asking you to have deeper conversation based on questions that we have designed for you. Ones such as, are you powerful enough to affect change? I want to hear from you. Please share that with us on Facebook, Meditate the Vote, and Twitter, Meditate the Vote. And let us begin to amplify the way that we see ourselves and the world around us. I, Sister Jenna, Meditate. And um, it's always great to be at Bus Point Poets because it's a time that I get out and just have a great time and party in my own way. So today we're coming together for something that means a lot to me and some of our friends that are here today. And when it comes on to change, when it comes on to shifting awareness or consciousness, It's not always the easiest journey. It seems sometimes it feels like salmon swimming uphill. But eventually you get to calm seas um, as you continue to kind of flap your way up. But what I'd like to do tonight is to give you a little idea of how we are here and what Meditate the Boat is all about. And tonight is our first public conversation that we're hosting and I'm very, very pleased that it's being done at Buzzboy and Poets. About two months ago, I was in India, in Mount Abu Rajasthan, 5,000 feet above sea level in the Aravani Mountains. Just picture that. It's one of the most arid areas of India, one of the I mean, really one of the poorest sections of India as well. But on the top of the mountain, there were 12,000 yogis. I think everybody knows what a yogi is. It's not somebody in orange outfits sitting here with beads, but it's an individual who is soul searching. So I'm, I'm on the mountaintop. I arrived, let's say, on a Tuesday night. I'm settling in. I'm coming out to visit and see some of my friends, and they are from 120 countries. And there I am sitting in a room maybe like this, because they're private, you know, dining rooms for um, the leaders of my spiritual community. And would you believe the first question that I was asked wasn't, how are you, what's new? But the first question was, Sister Jenna, Do you think Donald Trump's going to be the next president of the United States? And I say that with respect to his soul, but I was taken aback. Like, we haven't seen each other for six, seven months, and this was the question that I was raised by people who are conscious and aware and in service to a bigger cause, you know? So you can only imagine that what that did for me, it made me think. It made me think. So the next night, I wrote an article for Huffington Post. And the title of the article, if you get a chance, just go to Huff Post and Google Sister Jenna. But the title of the article was, Far Away from American Politics. And basically what the title basically, the story was about is, here I am, 12,000 yogis, 120 countries. I'm sitting in a room with about 100 of my friends from about 60 countries. And the question was, do you think this person is going to become the president of the United States? So I started to really consider there's something here. There's something here. I left a very volatile country in a sort of a theatrical way in how they're planning to run the country. And I wasn't quite sure 
in what way we were going to contribute to this conversation. So in meditation, the whole idea of voting in meditation came up first. Because how many of you know that May is National Meditation Month? I didn't know either. <laughs> I didn't know that May was National Meditation Month until about two months ago. So I called a few friends and we had a conversation over a conference call. And an organization that I have grown to respect a lot called Values Partnerships. Um, we had a conversation with a lot of friends, including them. A key player in that mentioned, instead of vote meditation, why don't we make it something more proactive, where it's meditate the vote. And that's how it changed from vote meditation to meditate the vote. And so, frequently asked question is, what is meditate the vote? And I think it's exactly what it's saying. Can you think a little bit deeper before you vote in your choices, your choice? What choices are you making in your life today where you haven't put much thought in it? It was just for a quick fix. It was because you were influenced by someone else's charisma or idea or word of thought. And so what I feel is that when I look at Meditate the Vote, I look at an opportunity where we're going to ask ourselves personal questions, maybe like we've never before. The candidates that we have are representing our voices. Whether we appreciate them or not, I think they're symbolizing a huge awakening and a huge awareness. Now, tonight is not about who you want to vote for. This is not about your party lines. This conversation is not about convincing someone to vote for anyone. This conversation is about us. It is about the way we see our own lives and the way that we intend to contribute to a bigger picture. Regardless of what is going to emerge in 2017, we're still going to live our lives and we're still going to have to vote in decisions and make decisions. And so today's conversation will be a very heartfelt one. One guideline and rule for this evening, please, no, no political banter. It's not about that. It is about you. And are you powerful enough to make the changes that you need in your own life? Mother Teresa once said, don't wait for leaders to initiate change. You've got to make that happen. And I'll always remember that. It was in our meditation museum a few years ago. And it's very, very impactful. So what I'd like to do is to call up um, a few of the team members of Meditate the Boat. And many of them are actually here tonight. I know that Antonia did the best that she could in really amplifying the awareness of today's conversation. And it just goes to show that when you are creating a shift of awareness, sometimes we don't know what to do with ourselves, we don't know how to support it, and we're never quite sure as to what is the action plan. So the first action plan is to come out as a group, as a community, to begin to percolate certain thoughts so we can feed from each other to understand ourselves better, so that when we make choices, they feel like they're supporting a bigger picture. I hope that's pretty clear for you as to how this all came about. Where we're going to take Meditate the Vote, I have no idea until November 8. We will see how it manifests into whatever it's supposed to be. But there's a lot of resource tool that we've started with. And starting May 1st, we will officially launch Meditate the Boat in the United States of America. And that gives me the opportunity to invite a friend of mine, Molly. Molly started an organization called SOAR Community Network. And what it's doing is inviting people from all walks of life and all background to not only network with each other, but to see how best they can support each other for bigger things in life, that we're not alone. 
And why I've asked Molly to join me tonight to share a little bit about this is that she's got a very special event coming up on the 7th, the 6th of May, where she's got 50 experts from around the country talking about how to better lead and how to create a legacy. I felt Meditate the Boat will also contribute to the kind of legacy that we might be participating in. So without further ado, can I ask Molly to come up and share a little bit with us tonight? very phenomenal mentor in my life and the event on May 6th is definitely far beyond my own vision. It's become something very special where all of the leaders who are coming from all over the country to be with me and to be with us in this community is really taking on and owning their role as leaders. And what we've asked them to do is really go deeper into what leadership really means in the grand scheme of things, not just what it means to profitability, not just what it means to just their internal employees, but what it means to the world. Uh, leaders are not leaders because of their titles. Leaders are leaders because they really know that their impact is greater than whatever's around them in the moment, and that their decisions count, their decisions touch lives, their decisions transform people, and their decisions can also transcend generations and cultures and ethnicities. So I am delighted to be a part of Meditate the Vote because my own personal journey allows me to pause as well as a leader. Um, I come here as a child refugee of war from Laos when I was very, very tiny, four years old. And what I've learned about being in the United States of America is it's a beautiful place but it's complex. And it has a lot of different aspects of who we are in society and how people define us, but most importantly, we have to learn how we want to define ourselves. And so the event, Meditate the Vote, really goes hand in hand because it's a call upon all of us to really think about the decisions we make in a leadership role, whether it's running a corporation or a nonprofit or starting a grassroots project. I'm one person in Washington, D.C. air who came here as a refugee, and I'm able to, with a lot of mentorship and help, and haven't been able to do this on my own for sure, live a vision and a dream that goes far beyond making money for a business. But when I see 50 people who are really changing lives all over the country coming here and saying yes to this opportunity, it tells me that we all have the opportunity to say yes to projects and to experiences that are going to transform our community. So Meditate the Vote, I'm a team member, a partner, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. If you have any questions about the event, if you would like to sponsor, if you would like to attend, please let me know. I've got some flyers for you. It's going to be on May 6th, and we welcome you to come and join the conversation of what legacy leadership really is about. Thank you so much. Thank you, Molly. Because when we look at Meditate the Vote, I think a lot of us consider meditation as a sitting down doing nothing of fear. It isn't. It is about reflecting and looking at different, different perspectives of seeing a particular image. For example, um, I could look at that chair and have a particular interpretation of it, and yet it's completely different than how you would see it. And I think for those of you who have the pictures that we're going to be passing out, I want us to be a little bit engaging tonight, because this is not just a lecture. We're actually going to meditate, too. <laughs> but we're going to pass on some pictures and put them on your table. And I'll tell you, I'm going to lead this up to Meditate the Vote in terms of its real impact that it can carry. The pictures that you're getting on your table are pictures for you and the folks on, around your table to contemplate what it means to you, what is your interpretation. 
And one of the most incredible things about an image or sound is that it impacts the way that you think and feel. So before you look at your picture, I would like you to take like 15 or 20 seconds of silence and reflect within your being and then view your picture and share with the folks at your table what you see. And if you don't have someone at your table, just move to a table where there are other people. Enjoy your picture and just see what it means and share it with the folk at your table. And we'll be able to share a little bit more afterwards. Quite interesting. What came up in terms of your thinking? Please, some feedback. What came up when you looked at this image? This table, yeah. <laughs> now, now, what made all of you in agreement after looking at that picture? Because at your table, there are different. There's a few different folks here. Go ahead. You didn't agree. What did you think? Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. You see, this is where we need to have these conversations. Very interesting point. Wow. Anyone has any comment on that? Who got the nature and the ego one? If you look at the nature and the ego one, it's like man thinks that they have dominance over everything. And nature is going, okay, carry on with yourself, but last I checked, you were also part of nature. Make sense? So you are not what you own. Imagine just having that slab, and that's it, right? That's just what you own. That's your property line. And there's so much more to it. And one of the things that stood out for me was this one, what we are versus what we want to be. And are you willing to take that leap? Anyone got this image? No. Because, you know, when we look at this latest climate that we're in, consciously and physically, I believe that we are something presently, but there's also another part of who I'm supposed to be that's calling me, and I'm going to need the leap of faith to get there. And I shouldn't be afraid by the bantering or whatever anyone else tells me to believe. I should listen to me, listen to what's going on inside of me. Who believes in this one? Who got this one? This is the best. I know that I felt like I was a successful woman on the top, even though I'm a yogi. But you know who I thought of when I saw this one? Santosh. He's like always walking with his hands in the pocket while all of us are like screaming. <laughs> so why I'm sharing that this, these images with you is we must be thinking and feeling a lot of things when we listen to the conversations of this particular time and political climate. I like this one a lot. Anyone got this one? If a man has a house stacked to the ceiling with newspapers, we call him in need for some help. And if a woman has a trailer house full of cats, we call her in need for some help. Now, when people pathologically hoard so much cash that they impoverish others, we put them on the cover of Fortune magazine and call them role models. Can I get a meditate the vote? <laughs> This is what Meditate the Vote is, is that we need to see things from a much, much broader perspective and break the mold that we've been conditioned to believe in. Who is this? Me. <laughs> Portia was like, this is me. <laughs> and so we're feeling overwhelmed. We're feeling overwhelmed. 
And so imagine just having all of these choices piling up on us and wondering, what are we going to do with them? What's your interpretation of this one? Feedback? Who's the real, real lucky one here? Isn't that a, isn't that a good one? What do you think? What do you think? Portia, what do you think? Let me hear you. Uh, if there's no ups and downs in your life, it means that you are dead. Ah, oh, yeah, I like that one. There's, which one is that one? Is it? Oh, where's that one? Uh, did I miss that one? Yeah. I must have missed that one. I'm sorry, everyone. Okay. Yeah, we got it? All right. So, yeah, if there aren't any ups and downs, it's right, you're dead. Something's up. So we don't want to have that, right? Um, anyone else saw something that they interpreted differently? Julio? I have a piece of paper and I, I control your entire life. The one with the dollar bill. Exactly. So are we have a way of looking at money and how money tends to control our lives. This is one of my favorites. What do you see, four or three? How many you see four? How many see three? Okay. So, <laughs> so what this is saying is the way you see something determines your understanding. So meditating the boat is inviting you to just not get derailed by all the theater. All the theater. What's most important is checking your own life and asking yourself the questions such as, are you powerful enough to make changes for you? How many folks in this room feel that something in your life can give way, could change? Like something could be better. How's everybody's finance? Got some millions going? Do you not owe anyone? How many in this room absolutely do not owe anyone a penny? Hands up. <laughs> Sorry, yay! That's good. That's excellent. <laughs> Give him a button. Give him a hit the vote button. Because that's the kind of America we want. The kind where you're not enslaved by a system that I didn't find out enough information about before I signed up for it, right? How many of you have got all relationships working well? 
How many of you can take a negative situation and make it positive all the time? All the time? Go, girl. Very good. Very, very good. Very good. And so we look at these four key areas, finance, relationship, the mind, and the last one, health. This is the wellness res um, revolution at Best Point Poets. And we're looking at health. How many of you, your body is just ache less? You're so good. But it's like there's always something. So here is the challenge. On a personal note, put aside whatever happens in 2017. How many of us in this room are willing to find the power within our own lives to change ourselves? Okay? So what I'd like to do is to take us into just a moment of reflection and hold that thought. How many of us are willing to amplify our own power to change? And what better person to ask to come up to share a little bit about that before we go into the engaging conversations of the meditate the other questions. A very dear friend of mine that I met a year and a half ago, or two years almost, Reverend Sylvia Sunter, she heads the unity of Washington, D.C. in the nation's capital. We have become such good friends over our quality of conversation but our ability to respect each other's voices, even though I don't agree with some of the things that she says, but I accept them. And she certainly doesn't agree with some of the things that I say, but she accepts them. And I believe the reason for that energy of conversation is our own ability to respect ourselves. So I'd like to invite Reverend Sylvia Sandra to come and share a few thoughts and words and right after that, we're going to go into the questions of the conversations that are designed by Meditate the Reverend Sancti. Thank you so much, Sister Janet, for the invitation. Um, I'm delighted to be here because this is such an important time. It's such an important conversation for all of us to have. Um, I have a congregation that I serve in, in Washington, D.C. And last year, if you recall, there were so many events, uh, killings, and uh, the community was sort of up in arms. And each Sunday, it felt like every Sunday that I would come in, I would have to talk about what had just happened in the news. And you know, people were wanting to do something. What can we do? And um, I said, you know, we can certainly go out and we can march and we can protest and we can do a lot of outer things. But what we do best is turning within and working on our own consciousness. And what would the world be like if we were to each go within ourselves and raise the vibration so that whatever it is that we were to do, in response would have a quality of graciousness, you know, harmony, love, peace, joy. And so we were doing some things of that nature. And then Sister Jenna came up with this wonderful, what I call a divine idea. And I thought it's so perfect because life really is lived from within out. We're so conditioned to looking outside and then trying to manipulate the effects when we should be working on the inner cause. And I thought, wow, I'm so happy to be able to introduce this to my congregation because if we can take the time to be thoughtful, reflective, and to really go within and say, well, what am I going to contribute to this process? What would enable me to shine my light so brightly that then people see the light of who I am as opposed to all of my outer actions first? So this is such a wonderful opportunity for me and my community to be partnering and joining uh, Meditate the Vote 
We're looking forward to opening it up uh, on Sunday. And for us, we didn't know that it's meditation month as well, and we do meditation. So thank you for that awareness. But this is such a, I think, a wonderful opportunity. And again, it's not about, I, I think I know who I'm known to vote for. But for me, it's about bringing a conscious awareness to the process of what I'm doing so that I could have been engaged in not a political conversation, but in a conversation from the heart about some of these wonderful questions. You know, what, what is it that I see for this beautiful country? And, you know, I heard a statement that we're going to try to make the country great again, but what is already great about this country? And um, I remember, you know, my grandparents really being excited about the opportunity to vote. And I remember their values, and they, and they instilled that in me. We were having, I was having this conversation with someone else that I remember listening to my great aunts and my grandparents and all of them talking about you know, the importance of being able to have their voice heard, to be able to vote. So for me, this is all about bringing my awareness, my consciousness, from a centered place to my actions and to exercising something great. So, and to also have a conversation with whomever. And so I think these are wonderful questions that we've come up with that, um, that I can ask myself. Because sometimes you do an activity for so long, you take your own self for granted. <laughs> you're not even conscious of why you do what you do. So just taking the time to stop it again and reflect upon what am I doing with this precious gift of being able to vote my, of my choice. What am I doing with that? So uh, I'm looking forward to answering some of these deeper questions and to getting to know all of you and to thank you for having me here tonight. Thank, thank you. you. I'm so glad that we have such a diverse group tonight. Molly, who is from Thailand, Laos. Sister Jenna, who is from Jamaica. Sylvia, who is from America. Folks from India, folks from so many different places. And here we are here. And I can tell you, being raised here for the last 42 years, when my parents came over, this is just what I know. And I believe in working hard, and I believe in helping, and I believe in charity. Now, these are the things that I think are universal. Whether you're in a country, or in somewhere else, or you're on a river, you're on a boat. These are qualities that we, I think, just must have as a people. So, I think of each person's table, we have certain questions that we would like you to take a moment of reflection and pause first and remember whoever you decide to choose in your life in a political office choose to sit next to you on a train or a bus you must have thought about it well, the question is did you think of it from a bigger perspective so what I'm inviting you to do is to broaden your perspective of you first and then see how that can impact um, the choices that you make and the conversation that you're going to have tonight. So thank you so much. And there is a resource person at every table. If you happen to be one of the table, just move to another table, please. And I'll be coming around and joining you as well. Please enjoy the discussion. And in the next 10 minutes, I'll come back and we'll have it share it. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> I was beginning to feel lonely. <laughs> Tell the truth, is this conversation worth having? Yeah, right? Give me a big hand of applause. I think that now you get an idea of what Meditate the Boat is. So now if somebody were to bump into you and said, oh, I heard about this Meditate the Boat, what is it? I think you can have hands-on personal experience of what you think it is. 
I would love to hear what emerged from your conversation at your table. Could anyone who would like to come up or who would just like to share from where they're sitting, what came out for you? What did you realize and what did you understand from your conversation? This table in the front? Or in the back? Molly in your table? Hubby? Hubby, hubby, hubby. <laughs> was how does your life define that you're worthy, right? Are you worthy? And have they been? So Ryan said that one of the most important things to do, um, one of the foundations of your self-worth is caring for yourself. And, um, and caring for yourself is, oh, I'm going to let him say himself. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey, Ryan. Well, I think you model that belief in yourself worthy by like waking up every day and consciously taking the effort to better yourself every day and like every aspect of your life. Not just not just my I mean it could be my things, like just like working out, doing the hard work, and just trying to do everything and every every little aspect of your life, just better yourself every day. And just make that conscious effort. And even with that conscious effort, try to improve on that. Make that conscious effort more every day as well. I feel like that's what's so good because I'm like using that and like same thought process when you're thinking about other people, put yourself in their shoes, try to understand their experiences when they wake up too, you know? Because everything affects everything. So Beautiful. Ryan, that's that's excellent. That is excellent. Thank you. And I think that's where when we even think about just our own selves when we do put it from another perspective, like how is that person feeling? What are they going through? That it could maybe amplify our understanding and greater acceptance. So less violence, you know, less issues, so to speak. Wonderful. Anyone else? Thank you for sharing. Pass the mic. Natalie?
And I say, yeah, we could. It depends on your audience and the topic. Okay? <laughs> so if you got a bunch of Muslims in the room and they they basically practice in Ramadan at the time, right? Yeah, they might hum they might be hungry, but they ain't nobody eat. Right? right? So if you still have that room of people who ain't, you know, fasting, they gonna eat. They're all in the same room. That doesn't mean the people that's you know uh prescribe to Ramadan are not hungry. But it's going to be a separation. They're not going to eat. Right? Mm -hmm. So, we came to the agreement that no, you can't have a discussion or, or engage in a conversation and not create separation because separation is already there. We all agreed on that. We were not separated on that. So, I came back and said, that's not true. <laughs> that's yes and no. Because we agreed that it is a no, but we all agree that it is a no. So that is the one that's together of what we agreed on as being separate. Wow. You are raising a very important interpretation, wouldn't you say so? Yes. And while you're having this conversation, my intellect is just going, wow. And my question to you is, then what's the glue? Um, we're at a time that I don't believe that we were always so polarizing in our lack of accepting each other's ways of being different, right? And it's amplifying. This, this negative way of us being very non-accepting is amplifying, but also being more accepting is also amplifying because you can only go so far. So my question is, what would you say is the glue for the tree to accept the water, the ocean, or the earth, and still keep coexisting when you think at a deeper level, when you meditate at a deeper level, what is the blue? There is no blue. Okay. Everything is everything. Everything is everything. And everything is in it. It is what it is? It is what it is. Okay. So the water is no different than the trees. The Very trees are no different than the fish. And I'm no different from a woman, and a woman is no different from me. So very really no interesting people. conversation. Venetia right. has something to say that she's percolating. <laughs> I, I think there is a blue. Um, and I do agree that there is a degree of separation in nature. Um, but I think the glue is acceptance of, of truth. And I think you have to have an understanding of what truth is and how there isn't just one truth, that there's a truth for every person. And that you can believe, huh? you talked about belief. Um, you can believe in something with you know a lot of fervor and really feel like your answer is the answer. Um, but you can also accept that someone else has just as strong a feeling as yours and that their answer is their answer and that there can't be two rights. <laughs> uh, that there can be multiple truths and it, and, and it would all be true. It's an interesting um, aspect because how many of you have been deeply, deeply passionate about something in your life? Hands up. And how, what did it take for you to let go of sometimes the pain and the anguish that comes with owning something that you think is really important? Hands up. Where it's really hard to let it go, right? So what is it that perhaps we're trying to interpret here? If everything is what it is, and if there is separation and division, and yet there is a truth that everyone has a different form of truth, I almost feel like what we're going through is as if we are being called to think deeper to find there's got to be a universal truth. Like one and one isn't 11, but it is two. Sun is hot, but have you ever been there? Do you have any proof that it's hot? It reminds me of these two scientists that held the press conference. They were, do you know Sadachis? They're the Indians that wear this turban around their heads. Yeah? So they held this press conference, the both of them were scientists, and they told the journalists that they were going to land on the sun. And they said, that's impossible, you can't do it. They said, we're going to land at night. <laughs> I can know when I'm in Washington, you know, it takes time. It takes time to get a laugh. But 
what I'm saying, for them, it's real. <laughs> for them, it's real. And really, none of us have been on the sun. Is it really hot? No, no not from you. <laughs> Can I get another table? Sharing of your feedback. Here? Nicole? Well, to piggyback on what you just said, there is, I, I believe that there is truth, there's greater truth, and then there's lesser truth. So it just depends on where you fall in that, in that paradigm, where you, what you can grasp the whole to. But our table, we um, ponder two questions. What do you value the most about America? And the conversation was very riveting, very eye-opening. Um, I learned some things about um, America that I had um, noticed. We are a melting pot, and um, most of the people that were at my table are, are from immigrant families. So they had a totally different um, take than I did because I was born in America. Um, but they found a way, even with the challenges and the triumphs, to come back to, you know, I have a freedom and I have choice. Even with the challenges that they've experienced, or all of us have experienced, um, we still are the greatest country in the world in terms of our freedom to um, choose to do good or not to do so good. And the all other question that we pondered is, do you believe in your self-worth and how does your life model that belief? And with that said, we found out that some of us have struggled with self-worth and we were honest with that. But now we stand in our power and that we are standing on a platform that we understand it may change and it may be kind of fluid, but we're going to be the change that we want to see. So this wow. was very powerful for us. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's touching me even more because I'm beginning to see the unfolding of Meditative right now. Thank you, Nicole. Any other table, please? I'd love every table to share. Isn't the food good at Busboy Poets? <laughs> Everybody in here, we all do have power. And I love talking to these women. Um, we all have something in common at this table. And it's, we're talking about self worth. And so we all kind of like have an understanding about self worth and, and how we do uh, share our power and love our power and what to use our power. But one of the things we also talked about the actual meditate the boat. And I discussed also being in the field that I'm in, in the media business, uh, we see a lot of negativity that is spewed out and our subconscious holds on to that. And there are a lot of people out here who are not really educated on what it really means to have the power to vote. And that was what was really, really uh, standing out with us. Some of the people don't even know who the vice president of the United States is today. So how are they going to understand about using their power to go and stand in a box and make a decision wow. about their lives? Because they don't know that their vote can actually help them in their life or it can hinder them if they don't. And that was one of the things in which we actually sat here and discussed that. It's really a powerful thing. So how do we get the media to stop putting out so much negativity, even on the people in which are out here trying to become president or senator? Mm -hmm. You know, the first five minutes of the news that we see is always talking about murder, death, kill. Like people don't even watch the news anymore because they don't want that negativity skewed in their household. So how do we make these changes? so that people can become more educated so when November comes around, they know that when they go in, it's not just about meditation, it's about having a clear thought, it's about having that power instilled in you that I know that when I go in there and I make that decision, it's a decision I made, I feel good about. And that person that is standing up there saying thank you, I helped 
make that happen. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Wow. That's an, that's an important question. And I think that those of us here tonight can be catalysts for that, sharing and amplifying it in areas where there isn't enough information, there isn't enough broadness in which they can see two sides of the coin and then make a decision. And I think this is where a lot of us on the team of Meditate the Vote is beginning to realize the power of this conversation for the next few months. Um, I, I produce a television show called Soul Talk. It's sitting in a hard drive. And it's where I go around and interview the members of Congress about their spiritual side. But I've spoken to some top executives and everybody concurs what great work. However, People don't really watch positive media anymore. So what has happened? We've become a casualty of our own greed and ignorance. And we are going to have to push through more and more and more and remain consistent. And where it might seem like you're only transforming one person's life, it is that one person that the world could have been waiting for to initiate that critical shift that we're looking for. So maybe it might not be through organized media. Maybe the media is social network. Maybe that's the media now, where it's beginning, beginning to take over what we need to view, what we need to understand more about ourselves. And so Meditate the Ball will be going through mostly the social media, and that's where we need you and your friendship to see how do we amplify the conversation. Just now, Andy tweeted us about being here today in just a matter of a second. Do you understand? So the conversation is already happening here because some, some of us are tweeting out what touched us tonight. And that's what this movement is about. It's about us trusting the process that if a lot of us come together and stay committed to the intention that perhaps by November it's bigger than us. It's even much bigger but we have definitely moved the lives to become more informed and to not be caught up in the theater. Any other thoughts on any of the tables? This one? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so our question was, are you powerful enough to affect change? And um, we had several so of them, I would say. Uh, yeah, the first thing was that we that everybody needs to like start the change within themselves. Mm -hmm. And that it's important to work on yourself and become a better person, whatever this means as an individual. And then we had like yeah, the discussion, but we talk about pulse, the word powerful. And for me, it's like I had like kind of negative feelings coming up with the word helpful because if if it's like as we said within yourself, it's like maybe a good if it's a good thing or it's connotated in a good way. But if you're like doing a powerful thing on others, it can be nothing positive. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so but but in the end it's like if you want to affect other people or change things, it's good to talk about empowerment mm -hmm. and um, yeah, to encourage in a good way without pressure and like yeah, to to empower people to feel in a good way and to look for themselves mm -hmm. and from that point on to make a change. And as you said, like. If you just affect one person in your life, and this might be like already a big thing, maybe. Yeah. Very nice, and you did great. Thank you. <laughs> great job. Um, any closing remarks? Because um, if anyone now has any question about what is meditate about, you just witnessed it. This is what it is. It is not only about engagement. It's not only about empowerment. 
but it's about diving deeper and broadening the way that you look at things. Five and four is nine, and so is six and three, right? And so we're understanding ourselves a lot more. It's been decades. Has education changed where it is completely much better? No. Uh, it's been decades. Um, are there a few people still out of jobs? Yes. It's been decades. Are you still paying way too much for health insurance? Yes. It's been decades. Addiction. A lot of issues. Domestic poverty is still existing. So is it just the leader that we will elect in office or is it also our work that we must do as citizens of every nation, much less this one? This is what Meditate the Boat would like to encourage everyone to start to do, to see what way we can begin to contribute towards the progress of the nation and not just blow it off of ourselves and say, it's them. He didn't do his work. She didn't do her work. He's like this, she's like this. I'm suspecting that we are being called to step up to the plate and to step up to be bigger people, not for anyone else, but for ourselves and for God. So I want to thank all of you for participating, and I'd like all the members of, on the team of Meditate the Vote to just stand up so everyone can just get a chance to see you. And give them a big hand of applause. appreciated their thinking and their contribution and their time in the process. So, um, thank you. Meditate the Vote has just happened at Busboys and Poets. Yeah. 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 So, if we get to the closing of this evening, um, it wouldn't be complete without meditation, would it? Right? Exactly. And so what I'd like to do is to guide us into a meditation and reflection. And then I think after that, I think on your table there are Meditate the Vote signs and Keep Calm. Meditate, you can choose which one you'd like to hold up. And we would love to get a picture of that as we begin to share the story more on social media. Like Natalie said, the media is struggling. And I think if I were a journalist in these times, covering news, I would be mentally and spiritually dead. Because it's not serving my spirit. And I'm sure that individuals behind the camera and producing those shows are feeling it too. But they don't know what to do, they don't know how to trust the system of conveying positive news. Um, and so there's something for discussion. It is something for discussion. But let's praise social media as the next step for work like what we're doing. Okay? So sit up straight and hopefully your cell phones are silenced, including mine. And as we, you know, just continue to look at the suggestions that I made earlier, education, healthcare, and all of that, it's still on the table. Everyone keeps bringing it in front. Vote me in, and I will take care of this, and I will lower taxes. Can we just invite you to broaden your idea of this? They can't do it alone. So the question is, what is it that I'm doing for my own being and the environment that I have around me? OK? So breathe in deeply. Inhale. Inhale and exhale. Maybe we can turn off the wireless mic just so that the sound in the back doesn't get picked up. The wireless one. Yeah, it's okay. Because I can hear the background right there. So if you've never meditated before, it is simply your thinking, your thoughts. And it's just like the fact that we can hear noise outside of this room. That's what happens when we go into meditation. There's noise happening inside of our own heads, 
but it's not important. What's important is what I want to think and what I want to create, and that's what we're going to do. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. Could you turn up the volume on this one? Inhale. Exhale. Perfect. We've had a meal. We've had a rich, a rich conversation. We've spent time with unique and beautiful people. And I'm inviting you to be very, very present. And just let all of your inner energy just settle, just settle. Whatever you've done, the movements, the, the choices you made today, they're behind you. Just settle. Breathe in deeply again. And exhale. I take this time to do a mini life review. It's very simple. I simply go back to the day. That's all I do. I reflect on what my day was like. In the moment, I woke up. And to the way that I looked at the person that I'm living with. To the way that I appreciated my environment that I sleep. My meditation starts there. Can you remember what you were thinking when you woke up this morning? What was your first thought? What was your first thought? Because your first Thought sets your foundation for the course of the day. And so here you are, hours later, at the end of the course of the day. How did you do? How close? that you live today. How much did you come from your place of power and Think about yourself. Let's go deeper. Let me pay attention to your gender. Let 
doesn't exist. In your thinking, you're no longer a man or a woman. Observe how that feels. Who would you think of and who would think of you? Who would be a higher source? A supreme source? coexisting very peacefully. Breathe in again. Exhale. And take your time to be in the space again. Don't rush out of your meditation. It's not a duty. We're way ahead of time.
to really begin to keep engaging these conversations over a meal at home, watching a game, and to let us know what we can derive from the conversation so that we can keep collecting the data and growing along the way with you. I think on your table there, is, there are many takeable signs and posters. We would love for you to hold that up while our photographers take a picture of that. Portia, not upside down. <laughs> so there are two sides to your cards. So you choose one side first. Maybe keep calm, meditate the boat. And Antonio will take your picture. And then we'll just ask you to flip it over and the other side. And we would love to get individual shots of everyone. And. Um, I think there will be some thoughts afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. So could you come up and close the evening? Kenisha. Yeah, Kenisha. the Senior Minister of Unity of Washington, D.C., and I meditate the vote because I want to bring conscious awareness to all of my actions. And I think that this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to make sure that we are exercising our vote from the highest and the best awareness and consciousness that we can for the sake of our country and our world. So meditate the vote. 